we hope that this is a the first in actually a series of energy breakfasts. Uh, um, you you uh, get treated to uh, my partner here, Catherine, uh, for the first one, uh, and then as we go forward, we'd like to uh, bring in uh, policymakers from the Hill and the administration to talk about what's going on. Uh, uh, in their lives and in their portfolios as we go forward. So we'd like to make this a, a regular event if we can. Uh, Catherine just joined Quinn Gillespie on February 1, so you have her fresh on the job here, and uh, we're absolutely delighted to have her. Um, one of the things I wanted to do, uh, because we have such an interesting mix of folks here, some of whom are very much embedded in the energy business, and some of whom are just tangentially related to the energy business. I wanted to just kind of let you know a little bit about how I think about Smart Grid. Um, it's, it's, for some people, it's, it's mushy. They, they have some concept, not really sure what they think it is. And that's OK, because it is kind of mushy. I mean, there are things that structurally and physically work in a certain way. And they're not changing. Okay, so this is like your power grid. It's linear. And this is because of the laws of physics. We have power plants that produce energy no matter what they, you know, where the energy comes from, transmission lines, substations lower voltage lines, transformers, and then to homes and businesses. And until uh, we invent wireless electricity, which as far as I know is only limited to lightning, um, this is going to be what our system looks like. Now the issue is that our system has not um, had a chance to evolve much. It hasn't really caught up with the digital age yet. And that's what we need to do. And we're a little bit behind on that. So there are a lot of things we have to take care of um, on the infrastructure side. And then just on being able to allow consumers to interact because we can interact in every other way with every other sector. And we can't yet with energy. So that's where we need to get. What is this going to end up looking like? It, it does look like a mishmash. What this means is, in a smarter grid, you have communication from power plant to the home and back again. And everybody on that grid is able to make choices. Everybody has a decision-making ability. Everybody is able to, to decide how they want to view and use energy based on what their drivers are. And people's drivers aren't always cost. It could be because they want to be green. It could be um, because they like gadgets. It could be for any number of reasons. It could be um, because they want to be more efficient and more and have better reliability. Some of the issues that we have to look at on public policy are things like data privacy. People are saying, I don't want the utility to know uh, how much food I have in my refrigerator. Guess what, people? Your privacy is already gone. If you use your giant card, they already know what's in your refrigerator, and they're marketing to you based on that. The utility only cares about what you're using when and an ability to manage their system based on that. Another issue is cybersecurity. Um, it's sort of a double-edged sword. Uh, oh, what if someone can hack in? Yes, but also we will know a lot faster if someone is. If someone does breach the system, we'll be able to react a lot faster. So there, there are issues that are nuanced that we're trying to develop public policy on that we can't go out with a sledgehammer because you don't know what the unintended consequences are. And I will tell you, there is legislation that's often proposed that, that defies the laws of physics. And we have to be careful of that. We have to look at things and say, is this actually going to work? Uh, I think where we are from a policy standpoint is uh, the, way, the way I look at uh, the legislative picture. I, I think we need to look, um, whereas in the last Congress we, we looked at the House and what they were going to do in energy and commerce, we now need to look at what is the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee going to do. I think that the Senate Energy Committee and the White House are still working on it pretty hard. And what they're finding is that it is not a trivial matter to design a standard that works uh, for all the key fuel sources, um, especially uh, renewables. Uh, uh, and when you, when you put natural gas in there, um, how, do you, how, do you, how do you make sure that over time you have a model that produces the kind of incentives that the uh, standard is designed to create to build a domestic market for um, re renewable uh, sources as well as uh, clean coal and natural gas and, and nuclear. So I think that one is actually probably, uh, to the extent it becomes part of the puzzle, it'll be the last piece in place. This is going to take uh, months to work 
to work through. So we're at the beginning of a road. Uh, it's a long one, but a path that you can actually see come to some fruition. I think the President was very clear in the State of the Union that energy is one of his very top priorities. Um, and as we see the price of gasoline continue to rise over the next coming months, I think uh, there will be some political dynamic on which to build a case that we should do an energy bill. Um, I want to thank you all for coming out in the rain especially to do this and also thank you for your participation as a group here this morning.